Well, hello, and welcome to the Monday devotional here at Faith Presbyterian Church. Um, well, as many of you uh, probably already know that I uh, announced my resignation yesterday after worship um, here at the church. And um, it's the morning after or it's the day after and, and just sort of um, processing and contemplating some of the conversations I had yesterday, and many of the conversations I've had this morning via text, email, phone calls, um, and just uh, working through all those emotions. And, and you know, it, it, people keep asking me how I'm doing today. And all I can say, it's a kind of a mixture of excitement uh, for my next pastorate, but sadness uh, for leaving my faith family here. Um, also, you know, I, I have a uh, uh, one of my uh, one of the chinks in my armor. One of my big weaknesses is I hate to disappoint people. I, I, I hate disappointing people, and um, the idea that I'm, that I'm disappointing or letting people down or um, is is just killer, you know. Uh, but as I've been thinking about today and contemplating my time here at Faith Church. I keep thinking about the wonderful privilege it was to serve as your pastor, the wonderful privilege it was to preach to you, to be in your hospital bed, to uh, be there to welcome the new baby into the world, um, to sit down in my office and talk through some things that you're struggling with and, and to talk, talk to you about how the gospel uh, can speak into your struggles, can speak uh, into your anxieties and, and many of the things that, that are just stressing you out. Um, to, to sit down with you and, and talk talk you through a marriage that, that, that's struggling, um, to hold your hand through so many difficult things in life, uh, to, to, to answer your questions. I, I'm going to miss the questions uh, um, that you guys pose. You know, I'm, I'm going to miss so much about you. Uh, and, and just to say it was a wonderful privilege to, to be your pastor these these past five and a half years. Um, the, uh, the the wonderful thing for me, I guess if I could be a little selfish here, but the wonderful thing for me is I'm not the same person that I was when I got here. Um, God used Faith Presbyterian Church to change me, to transform me, to grow me in my sanctification, um, to, uh, to make me a better pastor, make me a better husband, make me a better father, make me a better man. And so God used you to form me, to fashion me, uh, to shape me and to, for his glory and, and for his purposes in, uh, in, in, in being a better pastor. So when I think about pastoral goodbyes or pastors saying goodbye, I think of Acts chapter 20. Um, and so if you have a Bible uh, uh, available, if you want to follow along, I'm just going to look at a few verses here. But Acts chapter 20, beginning in verse 17, Paul is, is, uh, taken, is being taken to Rome. He's leading the church there in Ephesus, you know, and, and uh, you know, many, many churches uh, wish that uh, pastors would stay uh, 10, 15, well, many churches who really like the pastor that they have. <laughs> some, some churches try to pray bad pastors out of the church, uh, but, but, uh, but most churches who love their pastors, who really like their pastors, want them to stay 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And the longest pastoral tenure that Paul had was in the city of Ephesus, where he served maybe two or three years. He was there just for a few years. Um, and he, he invested his life into them. He uh, trained their elders. He, 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 he did so many wonderful things in their midst. Um, and they really loved him. And here uh, Paul is, uh, is, is being sent off to Rome and he's going to be put in house arrest. And, and he knows he's not going to see these elders ever again. He knows that the chances are that when he goes to Rome, he's going to die. And here he's saying goodbye. Here's a pastor saying goodbye to a group of, of, uh, of parishioners, a, uh, a body of people that he's poured his life in for the gospel. And he's saying goodbye to them. And so we have uh, Acts chapter 20, beginning of verse 17. And here's uh, Luke. Luke is writing uh, as a... Uh, uh, as a reporter on the ground, he's with he's with Paul. He's traveling with Paul. Um, and he says, now from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews 
how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But, do not, but I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have I've gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Here Paul is saying goodbye to these elders, and he's reminding them of, of, of what he did among them. Now, I, I look, this is not Jason saying, I did the same things Paul did among you. I mean, my life was never in danger, um, except for maybe when a sermon went too long, <laughs> maybe my life was in danger. Uh, but seriously, my life was never in danger. My, my you know, I, I, I uh, I didn't have people looking to stone me. I didn't. Well, not that I knew of. Um, but 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 these things that, that that Paul experienced, these hardships that Paul experienced, Paul, I never went through. Um, but the one thing I can relate to Paul, and maybe I didn't do this. And of course, I didn't do this as as well as Paul did, because Paul's Paul. But but one of the things that Paul says here in his goodbye to the to the uh, elders of the church in Ephesus. Is that he said? He says several times. Notice that he said it at the beginning. He said, verse twenty: I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable in teaching you in public and from house to house. And then he says um, in verse twenty-seven: For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Twice he brings that up, which which tells us in this little short speech that he gives to the church in Ephesus. Of Ephesus and he goes on to say in verse twenty-eight: Pay careful attention to yourselves. Into all the flock, and he goes into he goes into start giving a warning about false teaching. And so, what's the point I'm trying to make here? The point I'm trying to make here is, is that Paul emphasized the fact that his desire was to preach and proclaim and to teach the whole counsel of God from the Scriptures while he was among the Ephesian believers. And 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 yes, though I didn't do it perfectly, though I stuttered a lot while trying to do it, um, though I talk very fast. Uh, and those oftentimes, I didn't make much sense. You know, um, one of my favorite lines that I've ever gotten from another pastor in ministry was uh, given to me by Hugh Ward, who was the uh, longtime minister of First Presbyterian Church of Moultrie, Georgia, in Moultrie. And uh, when I met him, he had asked me to fill the pulpit for him at the church there. And I asked him, I said, I said uh, Hugh, if, if I ask people, what your preaching is like, how would they describe your preaching at First Presbyterian Church of Moultrie? And he thought for a second, and he goes, well, I think they'd say it's like watching a cross-eyed javelin thrower. He never hit his mark, but he always kept us on the edge of our seats, <laughs> you know? And uh, I feel like, you know, my feeble attempts to unpack God's Word and to share the whole counsel of God to you was like watching a cross-eyed javelin thrower. But I can say, I can say that was my desire among you, because as your pastor, the most important thing I can do, you know, I, I always tell people in pastoral ministry, you have the the the, uh, the major uh, P's of pastoral ministry. You have preaching, people, prayer, and patience. And number one in that list is preaching. You can have all the patience in the world. You can pray. You can you can love people. But as a pastor, if you cannot preach God's word, if you don't have a desire to expound God's word and to, and to teach the people of God, the whole counsel of God and the grace and gospel of Jesus Christ, then you, you're lacking so much. And, and what I sought to do was to try, was to, try to proclaim, and to preach and to teach, um, though it may not have been perfect, though it wasn't like Paul, but that was my desire. And, and you reciprocated that desire. You you soaked it up. You you uh, you tolerated my, my stuttering and my, my talking fast and my um, maybe sermon outlines that didn't make sense or, or I didn't follow what you were saying. You know, you, you you tolerated so much of that because you loved to hear God's word proclaimed. You loved to hear God's word taught. And I'll encourage you during this transition period, do not lose that love. Do not lose that desire. Do not lose that passion for the word of God. 
Kindle that passion. Kindle that fire. Demand it. Demand that you see that in the pulpit. When the search committee goes out and starts looking for a pastor and they bring a guy in to try him out a little bit, demand that that guy preach the whole counsel of God. That that man preaches the gospel from the scriptures. Um, and continue to be a church and a body of people who love to hear God's word proclaimed, who love to hear the whole counsel of God. You made it so easy for me to preach to you because you loved to hear the word of God proclaimed. Um, and that's that's one of the things I'm going to miss. Uh, because in that we shared the same heart. We were kindred spirits. And um, I greatly appreciate you for being so patient with me as I sought to proclaim God's word to you. Well, I'm sorry, it kind of made it about me today. Um, but uh, but really, it's, it's, uh, it's God working in us through his word. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for being so good and gracious toward us. Father, I pray that you give us all a desire for your word. I pray that you give us all a desire for good, solid, grounded, gospel-centered preaching and teaching. For it, it is in the, the proclaimed word that is yours, that we are changed and transformed. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus, in whom we find in your word. And all these things I ask your son's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope to see you Wednesday morning. Um, I sent an email out today uh, explaining uh, um, my resignation and, and the resignation letter there. If you have any questions, I, I want to help you process uh, this. And so if you have any questions or comments or you just want to talk, then email me, text me, or call me, and, and I would love to, uh, to hear from you. What do you mean? But in the meantime, I love you, and God bless.